Welcome to the party, pal. You are for the neighborhood master cast back with you once again. It's time to review some vinegar syndrome partner labels. Oh boy, I got a stack of goodies here for you. About three films I want to chat about. I hope you'll join me. Oh, it's gonna be a doozy. Back, back, back from the dead. <laughs> You know, the partner labels for Vinegar Syndrome have really taken off. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, come Black Friday 2021, we see a subscription package pop up for the partner labels or sort of to include the partner labels, maybe for Agfa, Fun City Editions. Those are the ones that have really been producing the most. Maybe, maybe not. I do enjoy the 50% off as a subscriber and I've taken advantage of it to grab some recent partner label titles to review for you. Oh my God! Wow! I've got three titles here and the best one to kick things off with is Treasure of the Ninja by Agfa and Bleeding Skull. I'll show you the back, by the way. It's an interesting slip. Not the best slip in the world. I think this slip could have been a little more interestingly put together, but um, I'm fine with it. It's, it's, you know, it's just decorative anyway. It's the movies that really matter. This is the reverse. Uh, artwork on here treasure of the ninja what you get here is one feature length film and you get a, sort of a second bonus film but it really is only about an hour long uh the the real meat the real treasure here is treasure of the ninja you also get some short films right you get like you get a handful of short films you get uh more than yeah you get like five or six little short films which i'll be honest i skipped i think i had enough of william lee that's not to say i didn't enjoy it here is a shock treasure of the goddamn ninja is a good fucking movie it's a good fucking movie with a caveat it's obviously a terrible movie because it's a low budget ninja movie treasure of the ninja could just as easily been called a karate class dresses up as ninjas and they punch each other in the park. That's essentially what it is. That's very much what the second feature on here is. It's called Dragon vs. Ninja. That's essentially what that is. Um, it's a very much a Bruce Lee style movie in terms of like warring karate schools and people trying to take each other out. But it's essentially a karate class goes to the park and choreographs a couple fights. I would say the, the bonus movie is 100% a skip. It's it, not very good, and the sound is very bad. It's hard to hear what they're saying. So 100% skip a Dragon vs. Ninja. But Treasure of the Ninja is a must-watch, and I'll tell you why. This is an 8 millimeter movie. It's not a shot-on-video movie, but it has that feel to it, right? So I went in expecting a shot-on-video movie. What I got was a fairly competently made movie. I'm shocked. I'm 100% shocked. I was expecting... This to be utter garbage. A couple of karate dudes hang out at the park and punch each other. That's what I thought. I mean, it's essentially what it is, but I didn't think it would actually be an actual movie. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you have uh, you have score, which is not a very good score to, to be fair, but you have score used effectively. You have um, an actual script. You can tell that there's an actual script. The sound is all ADR. The sound is all ADR. It's eight millimeters, so you would have to anyway, but. The sound is all uh, re uh, recorded afterwards in post. So you can hear what they're fucking saying. Yeah, it's stupid, but you can hear what they're saying. That's awesome. That's good. That's a, that's a plus. That's a plus in my book. But here's the best part. There's real editing. Editing. That is the number one thing that is missing in a lot of these movies. For example, recently, Jungle Trap. Oh my God, what a piece of garbage. And that wasn't even a long movie. Treasure of the Ninja is almost two hours. Yeah, it's an hour and 46 minutes. It's a long ass movie. This is not a short little 70 minute, you know, bullshit shot in your backyard. I mean, it kind of probably was shot in their backyard, but you know what I mean. This is a long movie with a, a plot and a script and actors that, that try their best to 
convey the, the emotions and the stories. And the editing saves it. And the shot selection. And the fact that it was actually directed. It wasn't just put the fucking DV camera on a, you know, on a tripod and let it roll. And the whole scene is just one long fucking wide shot. For example, Sledgehammer, which is a terrible film. This has shot reverse shot, over the shoulders, close-ups, wide shots, tracking shots. It's actually directed. It's a movie that's directed. It's a movie that you wouldn't expect to actually have a director behind it. But William Lee fucking directs the movie. And that elevated it for me. I was like, holy shit, I'm actually watching a movie where there's a filmmaker behind it who actually cares about what the movie looks like. Like, he's not just, like, rushing this out. He's actually getting interesting angles. He's actually changing the camera. He's changing the sizes. He's making a movie. He's making a movie. Like I said, it's not an excellent movie. It's not a smart movie. It's not a very beautiful-looking movie. It's not necessarily the greatest thing ever. It's a mishmash of Indiana Jones and Bruce Lee style. I mean, William Lee's obviously a Bruce Lee fan because he tries to copy his moves. That becomes a little stupid. Um, the movie's not great, but the fact that he tries to actually make a movie with editing and sound and, and camera work elevates it and makes it quite enjoyable. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, my friend, we're no longer laughing at the movie. I found myself very, very much engaged and, and, and enjoying my time with this film because I was on the ride with the characters. Now, the, one of the biggest problems is there's too many fucking characters and I got confused like, wait, wait, is it that guy in the jungle? Where, where, where did this guy come from? There was a lot of, of that. There's too many, too many, too many characters. And it did not need to be nearly two hours long. It could have been a, a it could have been 90 minutes, could have been 70 minutes. But um, the guy made a fucking real movie. But that's shocking to me. And that deserves to be celebrated. So, thumbs up or thumbs down. That's what I'm going to do for partner releases. When I st I'm going to start reviewing partner releases a little more. Just like spotlight spotlighting them. And I have uh, one coming up for next month too with Deadlock and a Rancho Deluxe. So stay tuned for that. Thumbs up for Treasure of the Ninja. But keep in mind the, the ephemeral stuff, the extra stuff, the extra movie, you can skip. It's a hard pass. It's, it's, it's pretty lame. It's actually what you would expect Treasure of the Ninja to be. But this is such a fun watch. I, I think you'll enjoy it. I honestly think you'll be rewatching it. I think you'll invite people over to watch it with you. Okay, next up is a Fun City Editions uh, release. This is Walking the Edge. I'm going to tell you right now, thumbs up way the hell up for this get this get this right now this is fun city edition's best release hands down look at this lovely slip got that lovely uh gloss on there with the mat here's the back gorgeous gorgeous slip this is definitely one of the best fun city edition slip right up there with um alphabet city uh, in my opinion here is the reverse uh artwork which i decided to switch it over to that feels very much like a video store kind of uh, artwork, almost like fan art, too, in a way. Walking the Edge. What is Walking the Edge about? Well, it's about all sorts of badassery. You also get a booklet, which is a rare thing um, in boutique labels uh, like Vinegar Syndrome and uh, Fun City Editions. I believe this is their first booklet. You get a booklet with a little bit of writing, and it's an interview. I believe it's an interview. No, I'm sorry. It is a, um, an essay by Jim Hemphill. I know Jim. Nice guy. Um, you get an essay on the film in the form of a little booklet, and there's the disc. This is a bad ace movie. This is something I'd never heard of, and this is a very, very welcome surprise for me as a collector. It uh, revolves around the character of Nancy Kwan. Her family is slaughtered by Joe Spinell and his uh, gang of goons, and she decides, uh, after escaping with her life, to go on a quest to kill them, and she runs into, of all people, Robert Forrester, who is a uh, taxi driver slash collect collection guy for the mob. He collects people's debts, you know, like if they put a bet, but they lose and they owe that money. He's like the collector guy. So he's he's kind of he's kind of a tough guy. I think he was an ex uh, baseball player in the movie. Anyway, they team up. He feels bad for her. Uh, the bad guys sort of like. Uh, pin her revenge on him as well so he gets targeted and he decides to take matters into his own hands 
and help her take out Joe Spinell and the gang. This is a badass movie. Hands down, a super badass movie. I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. This is my favorite Fun City Editions uh, release. Boom. Hands down, my favorite, favorite, favorite. So good. As a matter of fact, I've seen plenty of revenge movies, but in here, there is a kill. I'm not going to give it away. There is a kill that I've never seen before in a revenge movie. And it is so cringy just thinking about it. Oh, it's so cringy and oh, awful and painful that ah, I get goosebumps Oof, just thinking about it. But it's memorable as fuck. And you are going to love this movie. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. You need Walking the Edge. Lastly, in my box of goodies from the partner labels is uh, Mail Order Murder. This is a documentary about a low-budget uh, production company known as Wave Productions. And their whole shtick was to put ads in, in kind of horror movie magazines and kind of sexy movie magazines like Draculina and, and EI and, and things like that where they will... Film your script. If you have a script, you have an idea for a movie, you pay them and they'll make the movie uh, for you, for better or worse. Uh, quality be damned. Uh, and apparently it was very lucrative for them. They made uh, over 400 movies, I think, is the, the final total uh, on that. Uh, Mail Order Mur Murder is all about that company, Wave Productions, and uh, their their rise uh, to power. And I think, I wouldn't say their fall, because I think they're still in, very much in power uh, this is Tina Krause. Uh, she was the director of Limbo, released by uh, Agfa a few months ago, six months ago maybe. Um, she is, of course, um, featured quite a bit in this documentary. And um, uh, yes, she's completely naked. Quite a bit. This is a new partner label, Saturn's Core Audio and Video. So we can expect more of this type of film uh, from them. This is the reverse artwork. It's kind of shit, but I, I kind of like it. The other one is just more pictures, like the uh, like the slipcover. Uh, the it's very interesting. Uh, the documentary, hearing uh, the making of these movies, hearing about the making of these movies, and and sort of the thinking behind them. You know, they quickly realized that they were just making weird fetish movies for creeps. It's disgusting. You know, essentially. I mean, that's that's what they were doing. They were making. Creepy fetish movie for creepers. Like one where like, oh, I want a woman to be shrunken down and swallowed by another woman. What the fuck? You know, oh, I want a woman to be, you know, choked to death for 60 minutes. Yeah, that's um, not normal. Uh, I'm not going to kink shame anybody, but mm, that's a little freaky, man. That's a little freaky. So that's what they would do. They would make movies for people uh, on top of making their own kind of little low budget horror movies. Uh, you get an interview here from... Uh, of course, the head of Wave Production is Tina Krause, all these other people. Um, I think Tony Timpone is on here as well, uh, the people behind Fangoria Magazine. Uh, it's uh, it's very good, very comprehensive. I will say it's a, it's, it's a little long. It's 97 minutes. I think we probably got the point at 70 minutes, but that's fine. I'm not going to fault it for wanting to add uh, more info uh, you know, to the mix. It, it never really got boring because it certainly showed enough Nudity that I was like, oh, oh, wow, well, so looks like it might be a good movie. Of course, it's not. Uh, none of these are good movies, but nudity will forgive a lot of sins in, in my book. On here, you do get an extra movie. You get, technically, you get two. You get what they call, let me get the name right, they call this um, Wave of Terror from 1988. Uh, they say it's an anthology, but what you get here is two short Wave Productions back to back they're not really connected in any way they're just two short about 45 minutes maybe 50 minutes uh, short little films um sandwiched together and they call that a movie so essentially you get to see two wave productions with this documentary uh one of them is hadley's hellhole about people stuck in a cave stupid boring and the other one is roadkill about a woman who kills her husband and then she sees his zombie form everywhere Again, stupid, boring, super drawn out. I would recommend you watch both on Fast Forward if you want to watch them at all. They're very rough. They don't really have any nudity in them. They have a little bit of gore, but man, weird choice. Weird choices. They should have put some Tina Krause stuff on here. I think that would have been primo. And I'm hoping Saturn's Core, if they're watching, will bring us some Tina Krause uh, nudie movies. I will buy the hell out of a Tina Krause box set if it's really just her topless 
doing anything. Tina Krauss is amazing, and I'm a big fan. Anyway, mail order murder. Uh, is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? That's tough. That is tough. I will say thumbs up. A tentative thumbs up. One of these kind of thumbs up. Uh, because I don't think it's for everybody. If you don't like documentaries, you're going to be bored off your ass. You know, if you like shot on video movies, you're still going to be bored off your ass because these are not very good shot on video movies. Um, but uh, if you like the history of cinema, if you enjoy shot on video movies, and you're okay with um, a documentary that's a little long in the tooth and some sort of piss poor short films, then I think you're going to have a good time. I don't regret buying it. And I think I probably will watch the documentary again, especially if they release that uh, Tina Cross box set or any anything where Tina Cross is naked. I'm going to rewatch this just to get ready for that. That would be kind of fantastic. Um, so, uh, yeah, thumbs up. Uh, actually, everybody, everything in this, in, in this uh, review uh, bunch gets a thumbs up. Uh, but this is the one that I'm sort of on the fence about. It's not for everybody. It certainly is not for everybody. Uh, and the extra movie is basically a couple of really lame shorts. Thumbs up, mail order murder. Let's uh, go through the whole thing again. Uh, a solid thumbs up, walking the edge. You need this so bad. It's so damn good. And uh, a thumbs up for Treasure of the Ninja. It's really, 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 really enjoyable. Believe it or not. I was shocked, but it, it really is. Thumbs up across the board. Yes! And that'll do for my partner label review for this month. Stay tuned for the next bunch of partner labels uh, that I'll be getting in. Now, I'm not going to buy every partner label. Uh, I mostly, you know, collect Agfa, Fun City Editions, and those are exciting to me. Uh, the new one, um, blanking on the name now, Culture Something from Germany. I'm going to be collecting those most likely. Those are 4K. I think they're all going to be 4K. I don't know, but I'm getting deadlock. So I'm excited to, to, to watch that. And if something else pops up on the horizon that, that, that floats my boat, sounds interesting to me, I'll grab it. And I'll bring you my thoughts here on Master Chaos TV. My friend, let's call it a day. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you do, you'll see me again. We'll get to hang out um, once more. And that would be a great pleasure for me. If you're old here, welcome back. I knew you'd come back. Thank you so much. On your way out the door, please leave me a thumbs up and uh, uh, take care of yourself. Oh, 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 oh,